on this week's show, we celebrate the wonderful renewal of springtime, nature's rebirth. This time of year brings green grass, budding trees, blooming flowers, and of course, cute little chicks and bunnies. We will meet two 4-H'ers who have a hankering to raise these adorable little critters in hopes of ending up not only with a purple ribbon, but also some lovable critters that will make every morning feel like spring. Don't hop away. It's all on this episode of Tough Grit. Shannon, what are you doing just throwing all these eggs away? Because they're empty. There's no chocolate, no coins, no prizes, not even any yolks, and I'm hungry. I've got it. I won't rely on that rascally rabbit anymore. No, I'm gonna raise my own eggs from scratch. Yeah, that's it. Think of it, Caleb. Fresh eggs every morning for breakfast and hot wings every night. But how do I get started? Well, you can start at the very beginning by incubating some eggs, or you can get yourself some chicks. Can I get those from Tractor Supply? Sure, but you have to give a thought to how you're gonna house them, and you're gonna have to wait a little bit on those farm fresh eggs. What a killjoy. Perhaps you're tired of rabbits invading your garden plot instead of being in your stew pot. Or maybe you're tired of the pesky little plastic eggs being found everywhere. Maybe you're tired of paying high prices for flavorless old eggs or tough, tasteless meat at the supermarket. Or you're entertaining the thought of raising a small animal or two as an FFA or 4-H project for your children. At any rate, not knowing how to house and care for these animals will leave us all in a big pile of tough grit. That's where we come in. I'm Shannon Riley. And I'm Caleb Regan. Today, we're not only going to show you how to complete the project, we're going to give you the tools and know-how you need to get it done right the first time. And we're going to throw in a little friendly competition between neighbors. And we're not going to do it on the cheap, cheap. Our two contestants today are two 4-H members and step-siblings. Let's meet them. Our first contestant is 15-year-old Brett Whittington from Michigan Valley, Kansas. Brett is a student at West Franklin High School where he plays basketball. In 4-H, he shows goats and his dog, Trooper. Brett is a true tough grit outdoorsman. He's so tough, I heard he eats his meals with a hay fork. I wonder what he uses for a toothpick. Contestant two is Bailey Corwine, who is also a student at West Franklin High. Bailey is a recent 4-H queen who shows cattle and swine. She rides horses for fun and says she loves her life on the cattle farm. Bailey asked me for a hint about today's project. I thought I would help her out, but for some reason she got upset when I whispered, chicken. Welcome to Tough Grit. It's time to find out what your project will be. Get ready to shake your tail feather and hop to it, because your Tough Grit challenge is... Building a chicken brooder and a rabbit hutch. Raising chicks from scratch isn't all that difficult. Your first challenge is to build a simple cardboard first home for your chicks. Today we're also constructing a rabbit hutch. We'll learn all about the different housing options and how to create an affordable, durable habitat for our furry little friends. And you're in luck, because you're not gonna have to go about this alone. We brought in some experts to give you some great advice. As always, the Team Grit expert is the ever-knowledgeable Hank Will, editor-in-chief of Grit Magazine. Hank is a real deal. He looks like a real hair razor to me. And this week's Tractor Supply Company expert is Danny Womble, manager of the Rocky Mountain North Carolina store. This gal is a pro. She knows how to get even the shyest chicken out of its shell. These experts will be coaching you along the way and giving you advice, helping you to complete your challenges efficiently, accurately, and safely. Whichever one you can do the best with those three criteria in mind, we'll walk away with up to a $1,000 gift card to Tractor Supply Company. For the first part of our project, we'll be using some basic supplies. A roll of tape, a utility knife, scissors, a bale of bedding, and a heat lamp. The tools and materials for the second challenge are fairly simple too. You'll need a screwdriver and the heavy-duty rabbit hutch from Ware Manufacturing. Before we jump into our project, let's go to our experts to find out what to expect from our chick condo competition. The tools and equipment we'll need for this project are really pretty simple. You'll need two boxes, ideally um, about the same size. These are 24 by 18 by 18. You'll need it at least 18 inches deep because the chickens will jump out. Okay. Um, you can get these boxes from anywhere. It can be a hardware store, grocery store. You can even buy them from a storage supply house. Um, both of them about $15. Okay. 
Brett, the key to success with this project is to know which end is the top and which end is the bottom of the box. If you bought the boxes, there's always a label at the bottom like on these. And then you just want to assemble the box, raise it up, fold in the short flaps, fold in the long flaps, and get that seam kind of lined up. And then tape it. The purpose of the tape is, is strength and you want to be able to seal in the bedding in the brooder. Then you just flip the box over and, and you want to tape down the center seam. Then we're going to take our knife, be very careful with this, and we're going to cut down both factory seams. Okay? Fold it out and then if you'd hand me the other box, we'll see how they fit together. Kind of like a puzzle. And ultimately we want to slide them together. Make yourself one longer box. We're going to have to tape down the seams and get any loose bits of tape out to prevent the chickens from um, pecking at it. Then we're going to decide on which, which side is going to be the feeders and waters and which side is going to be the brooder lamp because we're going to have to cut the tops off the feeder and water side. All right, you ready to go? Yeah, let's do it. There we go. Brett, next we want to make the support for the heat lamp, and we can do that using one of the long flaps that we cut off the box earlier. Basically, we want to fold it in thirds, get one edge up like that, get the other edge about like that. Then you want to run a length of tape along the seam to hold it together. We'll do this in a couple steps here because the cardboard is pretty stiff. Like that. And you wind up with a, a pretty nice rigid piece. So the next step is to cut two slots in this, make a cut at an angle about half to two thirds of the way up. Just be sure you get all the way through. And you want to be on the side opposite from the seam. You don't want to cut through the seam if you can avoid it. So we'll do the other one down, say right about here. Just take these long flaps that we left in place and insert them into the slices that we put in the beam. Just like that, you're good to go. You will hang the lamp from here. We're going to put about one to two inches of pine shavings in here. Then we're going to put our feeder and our water, and your chickens are going to be happy. Yeah. For our first challenge, our two contestants will be constructing a chick brooder out of cardboard boxes using a design featured in Grit Magazine. Once constructed, you'll place into the brooder a heat lamp, bedding, food, water, and your chicks. Contestants must do all of the work themselves. The experts can give advice, but no hands-on help. The experts will provide the brain, while our contestants provide the brawn. This is a race, so you want to work quickly, but you also must construct your brooder correctly or we'll make you stop and redo it. There's also a 30-second penalty for any safety infractions, and that includes the handling of the chicks. So, no sword fights with those utility knives. Good luck. Ready, set, go! I love this. I love watching amateur boxing. It's kind of like a fort for chickens. Brett's got the bottom of his first box tape. Go, just go to the end. Bailey's got her first bottom edge taped. All right, so then just tape your insides, but find that seam. There you go, and that's the flap you want to leave loose. You know, if they used three boxes, we'd have three square meals. Tape that guy down good. Can you reach it okay? Oddly enough, this is exactly how I constructed my first apartment in college. Pretty in there, nice clean seam. There we go. All right, now keep the whole tape roll in there. It might be easier. That's a good idea. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Both contestants working on the tape jobs on the inside of their brooder. It's important to smooth it all down. That way those chicks don't peck at it and cause problems. Now that's one box down. You got another one to go. I think they should use refrigerator boxes. I want big nuggets. Slow and steady wins the race, Brett. Perfect, perfect. Good, good. And then just that other stretch there. I guess if you're constructing a chicken brooder, you can't use duct tape. Brett's on to the cutting. Watch your fingers, yep. Now you've got to um, cut on your seam. Be very careful. Very careful. Get close to that corner as possible. There we go. It's time to take our first break. When we come back, we'll check out to see which one of our contestants builds a better brooder and who leaves here with egg on their face when we return to Tough Grit. I am not either cheap.
Whether brooding chicks for a laying flock or broilers, ground corn cobs, wood shavings, or shredded paper work well as brooder bedding material. You want to be sure that the material is not so fine that the chicks will ingest it, nor so slippery that they can't get traction on it. Chicks raised on slippery surfaces tend to develop splay foot, which cripples them for life. Turn on the heat lamp to warm up the brooder before installing the chicks. As you add chicks to the brooder, dip their beaks into the water trough and release them. If they huddle in a tight group beneath the lamp, they are cold. If they form a ring around the lamp, pant, or lounge on their sides with their legs stretched out, they are too warm. Adjust the temperature warmer by lowering the lamp and cooler by raising it. Contented chicks will peep with a mesmerizing murmur and will be more or less evenly dispersed beneath the lamp with individuals or small groups making frequent trips to the waterer and feeder. You will want to lower the brooder temperature about five degrees each week by raising the lamp in small increments. And when your chicks are fully feathered, it's time to move them to a safe outdoor coop. Take a little care with brooding and in a few months, you'll be enjoying farm fresh eggs every day. We're in the heat of challenge number one as Brett and Bailey put together their cardboard brooders. Next, we'll just install their heat lamps and then place into the brooder their bedding, feed, water, and their 10 chicks. Caleb knows all about that because he's such a chick magnet. Bailey finalizing the cut on her second box. Just pull that bottom out. It's a close race so far. Beautiful, awesome. Both contestants have their brooders fit into place. Now let's get on the taping. Go all the way down to the corner. Nail pull. See how you've got that pressure on that end? Mm -hmm. All right, now keep on pulling. Keep on, keep on, keep on. There we go, now we're cooking. Brett moves on to cutting off those excess sides. Beautiful. Team Grit was getting some flack from their flap. That first flap giving Brett a little bit of trouble. There he's got it. So let's cut from here down off. Awesome. There we go. Hot dog. Awesome. Beautiful. What's up? Bailey coming back. She's a little quicker with that box cutter. No. Team Track Supply finished with their cutting. Yep, you're almost there. Just keep it straight to the end there. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Awesome. There we go. Bailey constructed her bracket for the light. It is neck and neck right now. Beautiful. Bailey's struggling a little bit with that support for the heat lamp. It's tough to fold corrugated cardboard against the grain. <laughs> we got fun tape everywhere. Brett's got his light support made. Goes on these flaps here. They better get used to that heat lamp. They use them in all the fine fast food restaurants. Brett's got his heat lamp in place. Brett installing his bedding. I really love pine shavings, although it's hard to get the shaving cream on the tree. Go farther towards that end because you want the brooder lamp on one end. There we go, perfect. Brett's on to get his tin chicks. Go ahead and bring the box over. Team Tractor Supply mounting their heat lamp. Hold that and then wrap the cord. Careful with those chicks. I I'm gonna name that one Chirps. And that one Twerps. And because that one reminds me of Hank. Burps. Three. Plug it up. Gotta get warm for the chickens. Okay, now shavings. Ten, that's it. All right, great job everybody. Come on over here. Caleb, it looks like we have a winner, but let's make it official. Great jobs on both of you guys' parts. We ended up with two well-constructed brooders, um, a bunch of happy chicks. Brett, you just did it in a little quicker time. You just won yourself a $500 gift card to Tractor Supply Company. So what do you owe your success? A lot of great advice from Hank. Excellent. Now that our brooders are in place, it's time to move on to our second challenge, building a rabbit hutch. Hutch your mouth, Caleb. When we come back, we're going to find out which one of our contestants will leave with another $500 gift card from Tractor Supply and who will just leave hoppy mad when we return to Tough Grit. Welcome back to Tough Grit. Today, we're making habitats for chicks and rabbits. Our two contestants, Brett and Bailey, have mastered the art of the cardboard chick brooder. Now it's time to set our sights on a rabbit hutch. Now a rabbit shelter needs to protect rabbits from two things, the elements and predators. 
It should also be accessible for cleaning, watering, feeding, observation, and handling. Let's turn to our experts to get us started with the rabbit hutches. Brett, for beginners at raising rabbits, it's probably best to choose a wire cage such as we've got here. You can actually hold the wire cage with a wooden frame, which is kind of like what we're going to build today, but, but you can also find one that has a, a metal frame. And you definitely want to have a, a wire bottom. It's much more sanitary than an all wood hutch. It's possible to raise rabbits in an all wood hutch, but you want to be more experienced and, and you want to know how to keep it really clean because it's a good place to breed parasites. The first big decision with getting rabbits is to keep them indoor or outdoor. Rabbits can handle from 50 to 69 degrees Fahrenheit. They can go as low as 32 and up to 100. Now when keeping them inside, ventilation is a key. If you're going to locate your hutch outside, you want to definitely put it in a place where there's going to maximize the airflow because you want to keep your rabbits as cool as you can in the summertime. In the wintertime, you do want to keep them out of the wind and even if they're in kind of a windy place, you can take care of that by, by surrounding the sides of the hutch, at least three of the sides and perhaps the top with a plastic sheeting or plywood or something like that. Do most people choose to keep their hutches outdoors? Um, yes, ventilation is the key. Um, you really want one rabbit per hutch, ideally. Um, however, just keep the buck out of there. You can have two does together, just keep the buck out. Besides shade, how can I keep my outdoor rabbits cooler in the summer months? That's a great question, Brett. You know, you can put a fan so that it blows cool air across them. You can actually install a mister fan, which will cool the air even further. Uh, you know, and I think probably one of the best things you can do is take virtually any container that you can get your hands on, fill it with water, put it in your freezer until it's frozen solid, set it in the hutch next to the rabbits and they'll snuggle up and it'll help lower their body temperature. You really just want to have one pound per square foot of cage. So in instance, these eight pound does, let's have eight square feet for them. All right. And now it's time to build our hutches. But will they be rarefied rabbit ranches or houses of horrors? Remember, you must move quickly, but you must adhere to the instructions provided. First one done wins, but you're not done until your hutch is rabbit ready. So filled with hay, water, and your rabbit. Good luck to you both. Ready, set, go. Okay, now grab your boat. Long one. These look like they're going to be fine bunny bungalows. Let's start. All right, get the other one and then, and then get, get ready with the screwdriver. Struggling just a little bit to find the pilot holes on those side pieces. You're going to have to come down. There we go. Okay. You yeah. would think it would fit right up there snug underneath that bottom support board, but you got to drop it just a little bit. This one's not going in. I know. You know why? Because it's hitting the... Is it hitting this? Is it in? Oh, it's not lined up yet. Okay. Oh. Perfect. There we go. There, yep. Awesome. Roll, roll, roll. Are you all ears to see who will win our hutch building challenge, or do you care it all? If so, stay tuned to Tough Grit. Rabbits are complex animals and there's a lot that goes into properly providing their nutrition. You've got an overwhelming variety of options including hay, fresh vegetables and greens, grain and pellets. It can be quite a chore to mix your own feed at home, particularly when you're starting out. Consider feeding them a good grade alfalfa pellet. High quality pellets contain all the vitamins and minerals that your rabbits require with the right balance of protein and fiber to help them reach their full potential. Most rabbits need two to four ounces of alfalfa pellets a day, which means a single 50 pound bag will last you six months to a year, depending on the size of the rabbit. They should also have forage to aid in their digestion. After you've gotten used to working with your rabbits, you'll be familiar with how they act when they're happy and healthy. At that point, you'll be more comfortable taking time to mix up your own feed blends if you want, and you'll be experienced enough to ensure that your ration has given your rabbits everything they need. We're in the home stretch of our rabbit hutch building challenge, and Bailey and Brett are both hard at work. All three wing nuts on that one side are installed. Bailey's still kind of fighting that second side. There's a lot of wing nuts in this structure, but occasionally you got to use a screwdriver. And Brett's showing some amazing dexterity with those tools. Look at your, which side screw do I need? You'll need the long one. Bailey and Brad are both bright kids. You can tell they're asking good questions, following directions to a T, building these hutches the right way. You want to switch me sides so that I can work Yep. Well, one thing I know is when they're all done with this, they're going to get good television reception with all those rabbit ears.
The rabbit could get loose, so we still have a chance. <laughs> Finished. Good job, All right. right, great job, everybody. Very fine competition. Come on in here, Caleb. It looks like we have a winner, huh? Good job, both of you guys. We've got a couple of hutches back here that would make any bunny uh, happy. Brett, you just did it in a little quicker time. Congratulations. Congratulations, sir. You win a $1,000 gift card from Tractor Supply Company. What are you going to get with your winnings? I'll probably just share it with the family. That's a great plan. And did you have a great time, Bailey? Yeah, and I'm still smarter than you, so. Oh, no one ever questioned that. <laughs> and if you're sitting at home right now thinking, hey, I could do that, well, get off your fluffy tail, hop over to the computer, and sign on for the Tough Grit Rural America Challenge. Here's how. To sign up, go to toughgrit.com and click on the I can do that button or look for the advertisement in Grit Magazine. Don't wait, sign up today. Now you know almost everything you need to know about building a brooder for chicks and a hutch for rabbits. And if you'd like to learn more, visit toughgrit.com. I'm glad you could be with us today and I look forward to seeing you again soon. And remember that old adage, don't count your chickens before they hatch. And if I'm around, you better count them carefully. Why might that be, Shannon? Because I love a fried chicken dinner. I'm Shannon Riley. And I'm Caleb Regan. And if you see us coming, you know you're in Tough, Tough Grit. grit.